everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show, and welcome to a recap tutorial on how to make our V-Stitch fingerless gloves. This is the final installment in a three-part little live crochet along series that we were doing where we made a vintage beret, a cowl, and these gloves. And we'll link the appropriate tutorial links in the description box down below if you want to check out the rest of this set. These are really quick, they're really easy. They're a great project for beginners. There's no left or right handedness to them. So if you make one, you make the other one identical and they can go on either hand. So it doesn't matter whether it's left or right. We've got sizing for children, sizing for adults, and also how to make them custom in case you want to change up your hook or your yarn, or you've got smaller or larger hands that you want to make them for. That said, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we'll stitch up a pair of fingerless gloves together. In order to make our V-stitch fingerless gloves, you want around 80 yards for a child or 100 yards for an adult of a size 4 medium weight yarn. I'm using 100% acrylic, but you can use any fiber you like for this project, so long as it feels nice on your hands. You want a pair of scissors and a yarn needle. For children, I recommend a 4 millimeter or a 4.25 millimeter hook. This is also known as a G or a 6. And for adults, you want a five and a half millimeter hook, also known as an I or a nine. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Personal tension hooks and yarn will vary. So this pattern can be worked over a foundation chain that is any multiple of three. I recommend using the hook for children, you chain 21. Using the hook for adults, you chain 24. If either of these is not long enough or it's too long, you want a multiple of three foundation chain that, when turned into a ring, will fit snugly around the widest part of your hand. Once you've chained 21 for a child or 24 for an adult, you're going to make sure you haven't twisted your foundation chain. You're going to join with a slip stitch to the first chain you made and then fit it on over your hand, making sure that you can get it over top of the widest part of your hand. And that would be right around here where the fleshy part of your thumb is. If it is too long, then take out three chains and try again. If it is too short, then add three chains and try again. This is a very customizable pattern. Make sure when you have finally settled on a foundation chain length that is any multiple of three that fits, you write that number down because you wanna make glove number two exactly the same way. We begin each row with a chain four. The chain four counts as a double crochet chain one and we're using the v-stitch throughout. This is the double crochet v-stitch. A v-stitch is double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all worked into the same chain or stitch. In the same place that we chained our four out of, we're going to double crochet into the same chain and this becomes the first v-stitch of our row. We're going to skip the next two chains, find the third and work a v-stitch into it. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip the next two chains, find the third, and work double crochet, chain one, double crochet. That is your standard double crochet v-stitch. You're going to skip two chains, v-stitch into the third chain all the way around, and I'll catch up with you back at the beginning. At the end of row one, you will have seven V-stitches for a child, eight V-stitches for an adult, or if you used a custom foundation chain, take that number, divide it by three, and that will give you the number of V-stitches you should have in each row. You're going to find the third chain of the chain four that began the row, and you're going to slip stitch to join. Make sure that it still fits over your hand. If it is too loose, and this has some stretch to it, so if it's a little snug, that's good, but if it's too loose, then you're gonna to wanna to take it out and try again, maybe with a smaller hook size. If it's too tight, then you're gonna take it out, try again with maybe a larger hook size, or you can go back and adjust your foundation chain row. To begin every row, we're going to slip stitch into the middle of the V-stitch that's right next to us. So after you join your row, slip stitch into the space of that V-stitch. We want to start our rows in the middle of a V-stitch because this is a stacked or aligned V-stitch pattern. We begin with a chain four. The chain four counts as a double crochet chain one and we double crochet into the same middle of a V-stitch 
that we chained out of. So that way all of our V-stitches will sit stacked. You're looking for the next V-stitch. You're going to double crochet, chain one, and double crochet into the middle of that V-stitch. So you can see there's your V-stitch from the previous row, and there's the new one snugly in the middle of it. Skip to the next V-stitch, and V-stitch into the middle of that. You're going to repeat this all the way around. You'll still have the same number of V-stitches in this row as you did in row one. When you get to the end of the row, you're going to find the third chain of the chain four that you began the row with, slip stitch to join, and you should have an even cuff because you'll have the same number of V-stitches at the end of row two as you did at the end of row one. So once again, that's seven for children, eight for adults, or your custom foundation chain number divided by three, and that gives you the number of V-stitches you should have in every row. Slip stitch into the middle of that V-stitch, chain four to begin row three, double crochet in the same space, and you're going to work a V-stitch in the middle of every V-stitch all the way around. Join with a slip stitch to the third chain of the chain four, slip stitch into the middle of the V-stitch to begin the next row, and you're going to repeat this little pattern until you have reached five rows for children or six rows in total for adults. Once you've reached the end of row five for children, the end of row six for adults, or a custom number, what you're looking for is coverage of your wrist, and we're working up to just the base of the fleshy part of our thumb here. So five rows for children, six rows for adults, or longer if you feel you want to. We're going to slip stitch into the middle of the next V-stitch to begin row seven, and this is where we break for the thumb hole part of our pattern. We're gonna begin with a chain four, and a double crochet in the same space. So that's our V-stitch to begin the row, and we're going to V-stitch as normal into the next stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the middle of that V-stitch. So we have two aligned V-stitches that begin row seven. We are now going to break for the thumb hole. We're going to chain five, and this is the same whether you're making it for children or adults. We're going to skip the next V-stitch completely, find the V-stitch after that, and continue with the pattern. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, into that next V-stitch. So, we have two V-stitches to begin the row, we chain five, we skip a V-stitch completely, and then we continue with a regular V-stitch into the next one. So you have a nice big opening for your thumb. That is the same for children or adults. You're going to continue the regular V-stitch into the V-stitch from the row previous, all the way back to the beginning. I'll catch up with you there. You're going to finish that row like you do all of them with a slip stitch to join in the third chain of the chain four that began the row. You'll have seven V-stitches for an adult glove, six for the children, so one less than you normally do, and everyone will have a chain five space for the thumb. We are now going to work the upper part of the glove. We are going to slip stitch into the middle of that V-stitch, chain four to begin, double crochet into the same place. That's the first V-stitch of the row. We're going to V-stitch as normal into the next V-stitch, That brings us all to the chain five. You're going to skip two chains, find the third, that is the middle chain of your chain five. You're going to work a V-stitch into it. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, right into that middle chain. And then you're back to the regular pattern. Find the next V-stitch and work double crochet, chain one, double crochet into it. You're going to continue with the regular V-stitch pattern all the way around, and that re-establishes our V-stitch moving forward for the rest of the glove. At the end of that row, you're going to complete it like every other row by joining with a slip stitch in the third chain of the chain four. That was glove upper row one. For children, you are going to repeat the regular V-stitch pattern every row. You slip stitch into the V-stitch to start, 
chain four, double crochet into the same space and V-stitch or double crochet, chain one, double crochet into every single V-stitch around, slip stitch to join in the third chain that began the row and you're going to continue that until you reach row five of the upper part of the glove or five rows of that V-stitch past the thumb hole row for children, six rows for adults, or if you want it a little longer, you can continue to repeat the V-stitch pattern until the height of the preferred glove has been reached. Just be sure that you write down the number of rows of V-stitch or regular V-stitch pattern after the thumb hole row so that it's easy and a little quicker when you go to make glove number two. You do absolutely want two identical gloves. The nice thing about this pattern is that it's fully reversible. There is no left or right handedness to the glove. So you can make both of them absolutely identical and they will fit on either hand. Join every row with a slip stitch in that third chain. Slip stitch into the V-stitch to start chain four, double crochet in the same place, and off you go. I will see you at the end of row five for children or row six for adults. At the end of your fifth row of upper V-stitch work past the thumb hole row, if that's for children, or six rows if you're making it for an adult, or custom number, make sure you write down the number of rows of V-stitch past the thumb hole row. That's Easy to count, you just look for the big hole, that's your thumb, and then you count V-stitch one, two, three, four, five, six. Do not fasten off when you get to the top. We are going to work a little row of finishing single crochet around both the top and the bottom. That's to give some strength to both the top and the bottom and to keep it from wanting to stretch out on us. If you find that your bottom uh, foundation chain row is especially wide, then you can switch to a slightly smaller hook when you work your row of single crochet around the bottom. But from here, we've joined with a slip stitch to that third chain. We are going to chain one and single crochet in the same place. So right into that same third chain that we joined in, chain one, single crochet. Single crochet, into the chain one space of that V-stitch, single crochet into the top of the double crochet. And you're going to do this all the way around. You're going to single crochet in the top of each double crochet, the chain one space of the V-stitch, and the other double crochet. So it's three stitches for every V-stitch. You will have the same number of single crochet at the end of each of these little finishing rows as you did your initial foundation chain. So if you chain 21 for children, or 24 for adults, you'll have 21 single crochet for children, 24 single crochet for adults, or whatever your custom foundation chain number was. And it'll be exactly the same for up top as it is for down at the bottom. At the end of that row, you're gonna find that first single crochet that you made and remember it was in the top of that chain three that you joined in. So find the top of that first single crochet, slip stitch to join, and now you can fasten off and weave in your tails. If you're using an especially slippery yarn, leave a longer tail so that when you've woven it in, it doesn't want to undo on you. Then you're gonna flip it over and we're going to single crochet around the bottom. So we're gonna start with a slip knot on our hook. We're gonna join our yarn with a single crochet you can join your yarn in any one of those foundation chains down there, but I usually like to start somewhere near where my little tail is, just so I can work over top of it. Remember, when you're joining with a single crochet, that slip knot on your hook counts as your yarn over. Pick up a loop in that chain and single crochet, and then you're just going to single crochet in every single foundation chain all the way around, remembering that it will be 21 for children, 24 for adults, or that custom number whatever that multiple of three was. And if you found that your foundation chain was kind of on the loose side, you can take the opportunity to either crochet sort of tightly with your existing hook or go down a hook size if you find that helps. Alternatively, if you found that it was kind of snug, then you could use a slightly larger crochet hook or just try to be loosey-goosey, nice and even with your tension. Remembering when we pull on gloves, we kind of typically pull on the bottom of the glove, which will often want to stretch out the pattern. So uh, a little tighter down here is better than a little looser. 
When you get back to the beginning, join with a slip stitch to the top of that single crochet that you joined your yarn with, fasten off, and same thing as above, cut yourself a bit of a tail, and make sure you weave it in back and forth Along the inside of the glove, I like to use those same stitches, the single crochet stitches we just made, because they're typically nice and snug. Weave your tail in and out, back and forth, and make glove number two identical to the first one. So what you want to do is pay attention to the notes you made, how many chains you used as a foundation chain, how many rows you did before the thumb hole, and how many you did after and uh, there is no right or left to this pattern. Let's add a little bit of a thumb to our thumb hole. We're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. Pick up your glove and make sure that the bottom of your glove is down here and the top is up here. Our thumb hole consists of a fully skipped V-stitch, five chains along the top, and then the sides of V-stitches on either side. So I put my hand in here. You can see there's our V-stitch that was skipped, our five chains across the top, and there's the side of a V-stitch and the side of a V-stitch. So what we're going to do is work a V-stitch into this V-stitch, into the edge of this double crochet, into the bottom of this v-stitch and into the edge of this double crochet. So here we go. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch in the middle of that bottom skipped v-stitch from just before we broke for the thumb hole row. And like the rest of this pattern, the row begins with a chain four and a double crochet into the same place. So that's v-stitch number one worked directly into that v-stitch there. Now we're going to turn our gloves. We're looking at the side of the double crochet. So there's the V-stitch on the side. We're going to work into <clears throat> the side of that double crochet. You want to split the double crochet. Grab a couple parts of the loops of that double crochet, wherever you can get your hook in. So you don't really want to work around the stitch. You want to work through it. There we go. So get your hook through a couple loops of that double crochet, you're splitting the stitch, you're going to work double crochet, chain one, double crochet into it, so your standard V-stitch. Then we're running along the bottom of that chain five that we made to create the thumb hole row, and into the bottom of this V-stitch we are going to work a V-stitch. So right into that same chain that you built a V-stitch out the other side of, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then the other V-stitch on the other side of the thumb hole opening, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to split that stitch and work double crochet, chain one, double crochet. That's our fourth V-stitch for the little thumb hole. You're going to find the chain three, or the third chain of the chain four, I should say, that began the row. Make sure you grab the chain. There we go. And that just gives us a little bit of a lift through our thumb. And we're going to finish off our little thumb hole exactly the same way that we did the rest of the glove. So right where we are, chain one, single crochet into that same joining spot. Single crochet into the space of the middle of the V-stitch. Single crochet into the top of the stitch. And then again, single crochet in the stitch single crochet in the space, single crochet in the stitch. You're going to repeat that twice more, and this is the same whether you're making it for children or adults. It'll be four V-stitches in the first row of the thumb. It'll be 12 single crochet in row two of the thumb. So four V-stitches, that's three stitches per V-stitch, that's 12 single crochet in total. Join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet. If you want a slightly taller thumb, you can work two rows of the V-stitch before you add the single crochet row. Or if you wanted, you could add another row of single crochet around the top if you just wanted it to be a little bit taller. Fasten off. And, same as always, weave your tails in along the inside of your stitch work. Make sure you do exactly the same thing for your other glove.
We hope you enjoyed this recap tutorial on how to make our V-stitch <laughs> fingerless gloves and that you enjoyed making a pair along with us. I got this beret, the cowl, and the matching gloves all out of a single cake of yarn that was 270 meters or 270 yards, and I still have some of it left over. So this is a really great pattern if you are concerned about playing yarn chicken, if you're just diving into your stash. And also it's a great pattern if you're a beginner or if you know someone who's just getting into crochet and they want to make something wearable, but they're a little bit intimidated, this cowl especially and the fingerless gloves to go with it are a great beginner project. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed. We'll see you again soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, guys! Hi, everybody! Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe!